So we got the Eagles week one? Yeah, I was killed. I was really excited for week one. <laughs> yeah, right. No, of course I'm always going to be excited for week one. No matter what. You know? Because it's my first. It's the first game of the season, and how could you not be hyped for it? Right? Obviously, I'm not wearing brown stuff yet. I'll start wearing that when the season starts. Because why put stuff on? Not to mention, it's not like it's very, very hot around here. You know, it's humid, and I pleh, don't really feel like putting a jersey on right now. But Eagles Week 1, though. Hmm. With Sammy Bradford at quarterback. Last time we played the Philadelphia Eagles, they were actually respectable. They had Michael Vick at quarterback, Deshaun Jackson and Macklin at receiver, LaShawn McCoy at running back, and I remember that game because Trent Richardson bur bur took off Kirk Coleman's helmet with his head. Like, he went all battering ram on Coleman. Wow, I mean, what a difference four years make. The Eagles seemingly got worse because the because a certain guy named Chip Kelly decided to rip apart the team with his own two hands and insert his own people who didn't really fit his system. He thought he was smart by getting DeMarco Murray. Yeah, look how that worked. It didn't. Now they're stuck with Ryan Matthews and Kenyon Barner as their two main running backs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, you know, we almost got Chip Kelly, so at least, you know, we didn't mess up on that one. Although we did get Johnny Manziel in 2014, which that may be the biggest bust in NFL history. Yes, Ryan Leaf was better than Johnny Manziel. Ryan Leaf, although he was a bit of a douchebag at times, didn't really party that much. Johnny Manziel, he was a failure from the start. And I'll admit, I was a big fanboy of him when he first came out. But let's get, stop talking about the Browns, shall we? Let's keep talking about our opponent, the Philadelphia E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles. Since apparently their fans love spelling out their team's name every time they score. Much like the Jets. But it's cool when the Jets do it, you know. I mean, at least when the Jets spell it out, they go J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Shout out to Jets Central, by the way. But really, though? You guys... E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! Gee, I didn't know you guys were named the Eagles. I thought you guys were like the Redbirds or something. Or the Blackbirds. Oh, wait, that's the Ravens. Well, no, the Ravens are Purple Birds. I mean, you have purple birds, you have dirty birds, you have red birds, and you just have the birds. <laughs> the generic birds, right? I mean, and what division are they in? The NFC East? You mean the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Redskins? Wow. I feel bad for those three teams having to deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. Fan base. Now, don't get me wrong, I do respect them. You know, e rock EDP, Nitro Freak. Although Nitro Freak, eh, you know, he's up there too. e rock you know, he, he speaks analysis. EDP, he speaks trash. Like, literally, every five words out of his mouth is literally a bad word. <laughs> um, what else? Nitro Freak just likes to talk. Yeah, you know, he's kind of like EDP almost. Except he doesn't curse every five words. But really, who cares, right? I mean, we're talking about a team who has a, well, you might say half a quarterback. You know, a, so an average running back. You know, mediocre receivers. A, a okay offensive line. And they're going against a defense who is getting a defensive coordinator that 
of which last time he was here, our defense was top 10 overall. And Joe Hayden made the Pro Bowl. And Joe Hayden will probably play week one, which means one of the receivers is automatically covered because you really expect Sam Bradford to actually complete a pass against Joe Hayden. Boy, come on. Now, granted, Joe Hayden has not been on the top of his game the past few seasons. Really, you know, season and a half. But I expect this to be a great season for him. Jim O'Neill's system did not really bode well for Joe Hayden and the whole defense because he had guys like Paul Kruger and Bakevius Mingo dropping in the coverage, whereas Ray Horton has them going after the quarterback, which means good old Sammy Bradford is going to have a target on his back and his chest. And he may have Paul Kruger, you know, Xavier Cooper, who is pretty good, or, you know, he may be lucky enough to meet our, t our uh, two picks, Emmanuel Agba and Carl Nassib, who I'm pretty sure would be more than happy to introduce themselves to good old Sammy Sleeves. Especially since those two, uh, you know, are two of the... Well, they were... Oh, those two, you know, they were only two of the best uh, defensive linemen slash linebackers in the nation last year in sacks. They were only top two. I mean, they not only led their conference, they were one-two in the nation, like I just said. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's nothing bad, right? I mean, granted, our secondary is going to be a little bit shaky because we lost Tishon Gibson and Dante Whitner, which, granted, Dante Whitner, you might as well call him Dante Whiffner because he never really made that many big hits. He missed on most of his tackles. He could not tackle to save his life. But he is a he is a gym rat though. Not like that. You know, he's always staying in the gym. I follow him. I follow him on Instagram. I respect his work. You know, his grind. But you gotta hit, man. You gotta take down guys, and he just never did that. Raheem Moore and Ibrahim Campbell. I know they kind of sound the same, but Raheem Moore and Ibrahim Campbell. There are new safeties unless, like, you know, someone like Jordan Poyer comes in to take their spot. But I don't really expect the receivers to really do that much against our secondary. Tremont Williams, eh, he's okay. You know, he's not amazing, but he's okay. I mean, Joe Hayden's going to probably be all locked down. And I would not be surprised if Justin Gilbert had a great game against the Eagles. Because they're the Eagles, right? Usually, if you suck, you're going to have a good game against them, right? I mean, Matt Jones is not that bad, and he had an amazing game, I think, last year for the Redskins. And not to mention our quarterback, RG3. He knows the Eagles quite well. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he's going to have a chip on his shoulder the size of a 2 by 4 because he wants to go after these Eagles. He wants to make the Redskins regret cutting him. Although he will have his chance to do that week four. But what a way to start off the season than pummeling your old foe, the Philadelphia Eagles, right? And um, Eagle fans saying our receiving core is nothing. I mean, we got four rookies. I mean, what do you expect? We don't know about them much. Although I do know they are going to come be, they're going to, be out for blood, and they're gonna be probably be, be leaving those corners in dust. Malcolm Jenkins is probably their best like cover corner slash safety. Eagle fans saying that McLeod and McKelvin are a top ten safety duo. What kind of drugs are they on? They're nothing. No, they're not. Maybe they're top thirty, but not top ten. No, they're not top ten. Sorry to burst your bubble. They're not top ten. No. <sighs> and then they're going to come out here and say that, you know, their defense is pretty good. Eh, it's okay. The front seven is probably the best part. You know, Fletcher Cox got paid. Although, uh, you're the smunky. Your front office wasn't as stupid as they already were. Trading 
the farm for a mediocre quarterback out of Division Two. Granted, he could be good. You know, he could be amazing. But then there's the risk of him being a bust, and you're not even playing him this year. He's a top five pick, and you're not playing him. Ooh, man. I mean, you got an injury-prone quarterback starting probably week one against a defense that'll be coming for him every play. Oh, God. Now, if we had Mike Penton still as our coach and Jim O'Neill as our defensive coordinator, I would probably have no faith in this team. But with Hugh Jackson, Ray Horton, man in the offense and defense, got to be optimistic, right? So I'm not going to come out with a prediction for the final score. It's way too early. Still got a little over two months. I ain't going to be like that. You will hear my prediction the Wednesday before the game when I do my prediction video, my preview video. So that's going to do it for me for right now. You know, I'm gonna be, I may be back, you know, if the Browns make news or something. I have been hearing on uh, Bleacher Report – the Browns, um, someone said the Browns should draft a Anquan Bolden, like another big receiver, a veteran. So we'll see about that. I actually wouldn't be surprised because, you know, we got Andrew Hawkins, but, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But anything, you know, about the Browns develops, whether it be someone getting cut, someone getting traded, someone getting added to the roster, of note, not going to do it for no scrub. I will be for sure, you know, alerting you guys on Twitter and on YouTube. And speaking of Twitter, follow me on Twitter at crazy underscore dog 99. Like this video if you love it. You know, if you like this, yeah, give it a like. Subscribe for more awesome Browns videos. You know, I mean, I'll be making a video every week starting this NFL season. Maybe even a few of them. And uh, comment down below, you know, your thoughts on your team season. You know, and if you hate the Eagles, bring on the hate, right? If you hate the Eagles, if you hate the Browns, just debate down below and everything. You know, I don't care what happens down there. I don't even need the comments. Unless it's like from someone I know, you know. But, anyways... I'm Crazy Dog 99, and I'll see you at training camp.